Hello everyone, Mimikins here. Today I'm going to be looking at more of the weapon changes for the new expansion. This video will feature Greatsword and Longsword. I have already covered Hammer, Hunting Horn, LBG and HBG, feel free to check them out. If you like my content, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Let's start off with the Greatsword. Like all weapons, this has the ability to use flint shot while you have sling or ammo to send the monster in the direction it's facing. There's also the weapon attack you can do while using the clutch claw. This will weaken the hide, exposing a weak spot where everyone will deal more damage. Catcom did a good job making this move feel heavy and satisfying to use. In regular combat, the Greatsword has seen a few improvements. The changes are a bit more subtle than the other weapons, but definitely a boost to the Greatsword's DPS and helps speed the weapon up. The weapon manual doesn't make it sound too impressive, but if you've played Greatsword before the beta, you know that one of the hardest hitting moves, True Charge Slash, takes quite a bit of time to prepare the combo to perform that attack. Now you can use the True Charge Slash after any attack, providing you have Slinger Ammo to use the Slinger Burst with. Overhead Slash, Slinger Burst, then dive into True Charge Slash. Wide Slash, Slinger Burst, and then again True Charge Slash. It's so much faster and easier to get that hit to land. On top of that you gain a damage boost on the final hit if your first hit lands on the True Charge Slash. I'm sure most Greatsword users will be picking up stones now and can agree that this is not only a great quality of life but will increase DPS especially on faster monsters. Let's look at the Gongsword. Again, like all the weapons, Longsword has access to the flint shot attack. Its clutch claw weapon attack causes the monster to drop slinger ammo. The Longsword changes are anything but subtle. It has a whole new stance, Special Sheath, which can be activated after any attack. This will then give you the option to perform either EI Slash or EI Spirit Slash. It's also interesting to note that the special sheath is affected by quick sheath skill, and the subsequent EI attacks are affected by critical draw and punishing draw skills. These skills were underused in the base game, quick draw is a very easy way to build affinity, but a lot of people didn't use it due to having to sheath and unsheath constantly. Punishing draw was part of the Odagaran set bonus, adding a stun effect and increasing attack power. The EI slash causes your spirit gauge to automatically increase when it connects. This makes building and maintaining the spirit meter much easier. The EI spirit slash performs an attack which deals good damage. This attack consumes one level of spirit gauge unless you perfectly time this with a monster attack and you will keep your spirit gauge. It's like a counter that rewards good gameplay. The added benefit of Special Sheath is that you can use it to bypass some animations. I find it particularly useful to get rid of those vulnerable animations, like after Spirit Round Slash or Spirit Helm Breaker. Another thing the Longsword can do is fire Slinger Burst while performing the Spirit Blade combo, which can make the monster flinch, provided of course you have Slinger Ammo. This can be performed at any stage during the combo, this also includes things like flash pods as well. These changes are definitely going to change how Longsword is played. I think it makes the weapon more interesting. I like how Capcom are trying to make underused skills more relevant in Iceborne, such as Critical Draw. I feel it's going to ease the pressure of needing to own some jewels over others and give more variety for builds. I like the changes to Greatsword and Longsword, let me know what you guys think. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.